We've talked about libel and the cases that have helped to frame that uh, from a legal standpoint. One of the biggest uh, differences when it comes to libel cases that we have to look at to determine the legality of them is, uh, is someone a private person or are they a public figure? And if they're a public figure, they actually have a different level of proof than someone who's a private individual. So we're going to take a look here on what kind of requirements you have if you're a public figure in order to uh, make a libel charge stick. Now, when we look at public, we look at two different types. One are public officials, and one are public figures. Public officials, as you might guess, are people who are elected. So uh, mayor of a city, uh, people who are in Congress, city council members, school board members, uh, those people who have put themselves into the public eye for the purpose of doing the public good are considered to be public officials. They have a higher uh, level of proof in proving libel than do private individuals. Now, a step even beyond that uh, is a public figure, and a public figure is someone who chooses to be in the public spotlight or is in the public spotlight, whether they choose to be or not. And I, I say that clarification because there's actually a variety of types of public figures that we're going to take a look at. Now, the very first type of public figure is the all-purpose public figure, and this is someone who has widespread fame. Uh, you know, This is Kate Winslet I've shown here, and I put her here because she actually did have a successful libel suit not long ago for a uh, newspaper that uh, or magazine that complained about her weight um, and said that she had gone through some incredible dieting uh, because she, of her body image, um, and she ended up filing a libel suit about that. Um, so this is someone who occupies such a kind of pervasive position uh, that they're deemed to be a public figure under all circumstances. They have a pretty high standard of proof when it comes to libel. You have to prove actual malice. So you knew the information was false. You published it with the intention of uh, damaging their reputation pretty dramatically. Um, you know, in the front of this slide deck, we have Tom Cruise. He filed suit uh, against a magazine not long ago, which said that he had abandoned his daughter, Suri, and was uh, living away from her and had basically forsaken her. Now, he sued them for libel. So it's got to be something that, that's patently false, that they publish it with the intention of damaging a reputation, and they know that, that, that with malice that they do it with the intention of really hurting someone. Now, someone can also be a limited-purpose public figure. This, of course, is John Walsh. His son, Adam, was abducted and killed, and he subsequently became uh, the uh, person with America's Most Wanted. So, you know, he chose to put himself into the public eye subsequent to something happening to him, um, and it, often it relates to a controversy, something that's in a kind of a narrow set of circumstances. And the goal for you to be a limited-purpose public figure, according to the the court rationale is that the plaintiff must have kind of participated voluntarily to resolve a controversy. So, you know, these people do not have as strong a burden of proof as do an all-purpose public figure, but they still have a, a burden of proof that's higher than a private individual. Now, we also have people who are involuntary public figures. They don't intend to be public figures at all, but they end up getting thrust into the spotlight. This is Amanda Berry, who, uh, of course, was abducted uh, in Cleveland and found 10 years later um, living uh, in, in a house with two other women. So at the point that she was discovered and was uh, thrust into the spotlight, she became an involuntary public figure. And then everybody else is private. And all they need to prove to show that libel has taken place is negligence. And that means that you haven't exercised as a reporter reasonable care to get the right sources to confirm information. So while public figures and public officials need to prove actual malice, private figures only need to prove this idea of negligence. And, and understanding, you know, what is reasonable care? So if you focus on one source for your story and that source isn't very qualified um, or, you, or you don't confirm your information, that is not reasonable care. If you focus on other media without doing your own investigative reporting or your own reporting at all, that is not reasonable care. If you take, uh, you know, rumor, innuendo, and, and quote that as fact, that's not reasonable care. So, you know, as a reporter, you have a responsibility to tell the truth, to research the truth as thoroughly as you can, um, and, and what Bob Woodward calls it is the, the best obtainable version of the truth. But you have to make the effort to get the information correct. Or if you get it wrong, that can prove a pretty serious problem for you.